know why I get nervous talking to my camera. I have the opportunity, the perfect opportunity to edit out any awkwardness and I'm still feeling a little bit nervous. So let me shake my nerves. Yeah, shake it, shake it up. <laughs> I just wanna start out and say thank you guys for even joining me. It means so much that I can connect with you. I wanna talk about honoring your bleed. I have been thinking about making a video like this for a while and I'm currently on my moon cycle so I felt like this was the perfect time to sit and chat with you. It means a lot to me to be able to finally be in a place in my life where I see a cycle as something beautiful and not a frustration, an annoyance, something I want to just get over with because I I felt that way for so long. I felt a lot of shame around my cycle for so long where I wouldn't want anybody to know if I was on my bleed. It wasn't something that was talked about. And then when I got a little bit older, it was talked about, but always in a really negative light. Like, ugh, I'm on my period. Ugh, I hate my period. Ugh, why do women have to have this a month? These were the type of messages that I was both putting out and that I was hearing and that I still sometimes see on social media or hear this rhetoric. And I really feel like once I started to heal those feelings toward my moon cycle, toward my bleed and feel at peace with it, it connected me to my femininity more. And I really just want to share that with other women. I can't believe it took me until I was 30 years old to be able to talk about my moon cycle in such a positive light. I am very comfortable and I'm very in love with my ovaries and I'm very in love with being a woman But that came through really healing some of these ideas that were just kind of subconsciously taught about our bleed and about our moon cycle And that's not to say that your cycle can't be hard Especially depending on what other issues you might be dealing with That's not to discredit that at all But just to change the narrative and the mindset that we have around our cycle And I am on my moon right now and that's part of why it felt like the perfect time to create this video and the perfect time to just open up and kind of talk about some of the ways that we can make our cycle a beautiful time, honor our bleed, honor our bodies, and I don't know, just switch up the narrative. Reconnecting to all four seasons of my cycle in general has really helped me connect with my femininity and just feel more and more in love with being a woman, more empowered in being a woman than I ever have before. I really think it is our superpower. So grab a glass of tea and sit down. We're gonna chat. The number one way that I honor my cycle is rest. If we think of everything seasonally, because all of life kind of operates in these seasons in different ways, our entire menstrual cycle is like a summer, spring, fall, and winter, with our bleed being our body's winter. It's the time when the inside of our body cools down. Winter is a time of rest. And resting when you're on your cycle is, I think, one of the biggest things you can do to honor your body and honor the season that you're in. So whether that means staying in bed for an extra 30 minutes to an hour on your cycle, I love to do that when I have the opportunity to. Going to bed earlier, it could just mean not going as hard. If you're regularly doing cardio, now's a good time to slow down and either do nothing or practice a really restorative yoga flow or go for leisurely walks outside, a leisure hike something that is not gonna be as intense on your body and gives your body really a chance to rest and slow down it can even come to chores when I'm on my cycle I like to tell myself you know it's okay if the pile of laundry sits there for two more days it's okay to slow down on this project I mean obviously if you have a deadline don't just ignore your deadline because your cycle came I pretty much know when I'm gonna get my cycle and that helps me be able to plan so I can push hard and get certain things done a couple days before to really give myself the opportunity to have time to rest and relax. It could mean hanging out in bed. It could mean canceling some plans. You don't have to cancel everything, but if you know that you're probably going to get your cycle and you had a night out plan, it's more than fine to just cancel that and just stay home or do something a lot more relaxed. The seasonal and cyclical nature that we have as females is so beautiful because it just naturally builds in this time to relax. And if you look at everything else in nature even in winter the leaves are off of the trees they're relaxing you know everything kind of slows down and comes to a rest at some point so that way it can produce and be fruitful later so especially that first couple of days of your bleed is the perfect time to just stay in bed or stay on the couch allow yourself to be a little bit more I don't even like to call it lazy because there's so many negative connotations that come with that but just to rest 
just relax and allow your body to do its thing and restore. I like to honor my body on my cycle by eating warm and nourishing foods. Again, it is the body's winter, so we're warming from the inside out. So this could mean right now I'm drinking a ginger and turmeric tea which has a lot of warming properties. It could mean a lot of soups. You also want really iron-rich food, so if you eat meat, this would be the time for red meats. Spinach and leafy greens that contain irons. You also want to hydrate, so I love to do coconut water with spirulina powder because the coconut water is super hydrating and the spirulina adds iron to my body. Watermelon is something that's really hydrating. Having a nice treat with some dark chocolate, which has magnesium, which can kind of help level out some of the mood swings before or during your cycle. Sprinkle a little bit of sea salt into your water and some lemon to help make it even more hydrating. And drink lots of fluid. I also seed cycle so once you start to bleed you, you eat a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds and a tablespoon of flax seeds every day so sometimes especially with the pumpkin seeds I will just pop them plain because I really like them you can add that to a salad to a yogurt to a smoothie to a soup there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can consume those and I have found that the seed cycling really really helps me do my best in all four stages something that I think is a really nice way to make your bleed into something that you can look forward to instead of something that you may have previously dreaded is to create rituals around it whether that's having an incense you love that maybe you only burn when you're on your cycle or an essential oil or a candle just something really special like a really special scent that you burn for yourself when you're on your cycle maybe you have a favorite tea or ice cream or whatever it is and you save it for your cycle maybe there's a place that you like to go a hike that you like to do or even a grocery store that you like to shop at. I know some of these health stores I love can be a little bit more pricey. Maybe you take a trip to their deli during your cycle. Just creating really special rituals to turn it into something that you look forward to rather than something that you dread. So when you're bleeding, that's actually when your intuition is the highest. So I think it's very important as women and very empowering to kind of tap into that. So it's a really good time to think back to any big decisions that you're making now is the time to really sit and think about them and put them back and forth through your head because your intuition is going to speak louder you're a little bit more in tune with your feelings and your thoughts so you can use that to help guide you to the decision that you can make it's excellent for journaling I'm gonna be honest I have fallen off of my journaling game a little bit in the past few months I definitely need to get back on because I found it so so helpful and if there are certain ideas that you're finding are kind of bubbling to the surface every time you're on your cycle journaling is a good way to pinpoint those patterns and see that then maybe that's something that you need to take action on if you're thinking about a career change a step in a relationship or even just things sometimes I've found traumas that I need to work on will keep bubbling up every time I'm on my cycle until I work through them so really paying attention to your own intuition and your own feelings and using this time to make those decisions decision and be able to move forward. A real life example that I had is I've had a career in fashion most of my adult life and I've been unemployed the past almost a year now, <laughs> 11 months, but I had a big interview for a fashion position and it happened to land on the first day of my cycle, which while that's not the ideal time to interview, sometimes we don't have control. So you never want to say no to an opportunity just because you're in a certain hormone phase. Although if we can plan it, that's great, but we never have to let any anything stop us. So I did the interview and I am not even kidding. I almost cried twice during the interview and after <laughs> I turned off the camera I had this emotional release because it was my intuition was saying what I had already had in the back of my head which is I don't think I want to work in fashion anymore or if I do work in fashion not in the same capacity where I used to work. It would have to be leaning more into sustainable fashion so that was just a really big eye-opener for me that was confirmed when I was on my moon. This is also a great time to process feelings and emotions that maybe we didn't have time to process right when they came up during the month. A lot of things kind of tend to bubble up when we're on our cycle, but it's just an opportunity to really release. Allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to release and move things because once we feel and once we release, we're able to continue to move on. A lot of times I learn things that I didn't know about myself when I'm focused on releasing certain 
emotions and certain traumas and just allowing these type of things to bubble up. Your cycle is actually a great time for isolation. If you're like me, it's almost dangerous because I get so comfortable being alone. Like a lot of the time, it's very easy for me to kind of hermit and go into my shell and not socialize, but it's the perfect opportunity to spend some of that alone time or do something alone. I'm a mom, so I recognize that as moms, it can be a little bit harder for us sometimes to find that alone time. But if you have opportunities to put your kids in a camp, of course, that they want to go to, or if you do co-parent or have separate households, just any type of opportunity. If somebody offers to take your kid on a play date and it's a trusted adult, like now is the time to say yes and give yourself that alone time and just spend that time going inside yourself. If you're not feeling like being alone, that's okay too. I also find it to be a really, really nice time to connect with other women specifically. I don't even know how to explain it with words, but being around other women when you're on your cycle and connecting on emotional levels just means a lot and it's something that's really, really special. This is also a great time to be in nature and really connect with nature. I go on, I don't know, I call them nature walks because they're not really hikes. They're usually like 10 to 15 minute walks that are usually places that I can drive to in like 20 minutes max and go on a walk and just feel surrounded by trees, do a little bit of forest bathing and then continue throughout my day. Obviously the walks are short but you can spend more time there. Even at a park, like parks are really valuable resources. If you have a park around you that has a whole bunch of trees or whatever, I find it so grounding to be around nature when I'm on my bleed. If you can go for a hike, if you can sit at the ocean, if you have access to an ocean or a river or a lake, being around water can be very, very cleansing whether you go in it or just sit on the side. It's up to you. Kind of ties in with both the isolation and the intuition because I feel like my intuition and my thoughts are allowed to just speak really clearly when I am in nature and I'm not distracted by my phone, by people around me, <laughs> the TV, hearing my neighbors, whatever it may be. Sometimes when it comes to the emotional aspect and intuition aspect of the cycle, it's not always as straightforward as just journaling. I actually feel like through pieces of fiction, I learn more about myself as well, whether it's a fictional book or a movie that I love to go back to. I can really find what connects me to these. What do I either relate to or aspire to? What is it that is making me feel so connected to this story and so into this story? And I learn more about myself that way too and just kind of start to unravel these pieces and these layers that make up who I am. I actually do feel creative when I'm on my cycle and I feel like tapping into those things that inspire us and kind of uncovering, unfolding the layers why a little bit more deeply gives me a chance to sort of understand the root and more of the process of where some of these desires come from, some of these creative inspiration, like why am I so drawn to the clothing in Bridgerton and Marie Antoinette, um, <laughs> a court of thorns and roses, just kind of all the things that I like, like why and what aspects do I truly love about them. It's so beautiful to be a woman and it's so beautiful to finally tap into all of this, I guess, goodness and wholeness that can come during our cycle. So beautiful to be able to spend time with yourself or other women. <laughs> These are the tips that I have found helpful and have helped me cultivate joy and be able to see the beauty and the blessing in what is my moon cycle, what is my bleed, and honor my bleed and honor my body. It has helped me tap into my feminine energy in ways that I didn't know were possible, in ways that go beyond some of the more fluffy things that we're sometimes told online, like wear dresses, do your hair a certain way. And I'm not discrediting those, those do help, but in just such a very very raw and real way. There's a lot of beauty in the bleed and I'm honored that you all sat here and shared that with me. I'm honored that we can hopefully share these experiences together and as women going forward be very comfortable talking about them, enjoying them, and taking away the stigma and yeah I hope you all have a beautiful day.